Welcome to the workshop, gentlemen. It's getting old having the truck starting up cold and smoking up the neighborhood or the camp spot until we get it warmed up. And so we've got the heater, let's get it installed. Now, most people would install it underneath the vehicle on the frame rail, but our flared fiberglass fenders afford us some space here. And that's closer to the engine and out of the road muck. So that's where we're putting it. I drilled the holes for the bracket, gave them a quick spritz of spray paint to stave off the rust a little bit. They have a pretty clever cleat mechanism that hooks into the side of the heater and then there's a Torx bolt that snugs everything up tight. I exchanged the straight fittings for the 90 degree fittings and uh, our heater is the D5E, which is the external coolant pump on a vibration dampening bracket. So I chose to put it here behind the headlight and grill area just because that's where the hose is kind of relaxed and seemed like a good place for it. I got the silicone heater tubing from the local industrial hose supplier. Once I had that sort of in place, I rolled the truck back and uh, test fit the fender. There was plenty of room everywhere, so that was a good sign. I took it off again and went to installing it a little more permanently, drilling the holes and popping the rivets in the bottom there. I'm sure some of you were wondering why I only had two. Thanks for the camera work there, Kara. Really appreciate that. Then uh, I used Oedeker clamps, which are single-use, but I feel superior to a cheap worm drive clamp, so I used those. Here I'm installing the uh, stainless steel exhaust tubing. I just ran it down, the kind of following the radius of the wheel. Sorry, the uh, radio had to go. These clamps are a little bit overkill for the wiring, but I used it as an anchor point for the zap straps that hold this uh, intake air tube out of the way. It doesn't need to go anywhere special, just out of the slipstream of the vehicle and to a cleanish air supply area and then the uh, diesel line it's a very very thin tubing with a very thin ID and it just uses a rubber clamp I recommend getting the uh, muffler even if you use one from a lawnmower or something if you find something with the right fittings use it because it really cuts down on the high-end whistle I ran the coolant line through some split loom just to protect it a little bit and give me something to clamp onto. And the coolant lines there, I teed into the, an existing 90 degree elbow and the other one I teed into this straightaway. That's going to vary for every vehicle where you tie into, but as you can hear there, the water pump is going, the coolant pump rather, and the fuel pump is ticking away. Happy camper. So, breaking out the thermal camera. This is it on a cold start, and then about five minutes later, the uh, block is starting to heat up. And after 15 minutes, 20 minutes maybe, it's a right up at operating temperature. Or rather, the, the, uh, the coolant heater's operating temperature. 60 degrees is where it cuts out. So, that's all well and good. The next day I buttoned up the fender, put it all back together, and what I'm most concerned about is the uh, ABS fender liner uh, being in close proximity to the exhaust tubing. I just wanted to make sure that nothing was going to get too hot and possible fire hazard or melt something. 
So I broke out the thermal camera again. Here it is on a cold start. You can see the uh, exhaust tubing there through the crack between the door and the fender. And after a few minutes, the fender is warm. It's about 24 degrees Celsius. And then after it's up at running temperature, you can see the coolant lines are at 50 degrees, which is where it thermostatically cuts out at. The fender's at 30 degrees. So that's nothing. And then the area I worried most about down inside the fender, inner fender area, it's still quite cool. And the block is quite warm, as you can see. So that's really excellent. We took it out the next weekend and it performed as well as you'd expect. We're really happy with it and would recommend it to anyone with a diesel engine in a camper. It really makes it a lot easier to boondock and not smoke the whole neighborhood out. Thanks for watching everyone. We'll catch you on the next one.